Y'all already know what it is, Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. We're going to get into some of the stupidest things I saw people do while in prison. We've covered this before, but I was sitting here this morning, talked to one of my homeboys, and we was just laughing. And then I started telling him a couple stories that I had completely forgotten about. And it just took me back to how dumb some people can actually be. There are some people that really are just moronic. Like, you know, you see the hamster running on the wheel. The hamster is like it's drunk or it just sits there and teeter tots or it's like a skeleton or the wheel's got, you know, no bearings. Some of these dudes are just morons. Just stupid as a soggy Cheeto. Dumb as a broken Oreo. Like, yo, I've met some stupid, stupid stupid ass dudes while locked up and what we need to do today is we need to talk about some of these idiots and some of the dumbest things stupidest things most moronic things i've seen these idiots do while i was incarcerated god if you're born dumb that's one thing but to make a dumb decision to the level of what i've seen some of these guys do is just unheard of so anyways, y'all know I done seen it. You know I done lived it. So let's relive it. Dating back to, man, even being a kid, if I was to count it all up, I've had well over, no exaggeration, I know I've had over at least 100 different cellmates. Doing time a long time, locked up in a lot of places. But I've had a lot of cellmates. I've had cellmates of every color, cellmates of every age range, Cellmates of all kinds. But I have one that I got of Greensville named Berg. Now, Berg got his name from the fact that he was from Petersburg. Petersburg and Richmond being two of the predominant cities here in Virginia. Two of the cities with the highest crime rates with murder, robbery, drug dealing, guns. In prison, Richmond and Petersburg, they flock together. In the jail, not so much. I've got into fights with, you know, guys from Petersburg in the jail. In the jail, it's a little different. We're separated. We don't separate by race. We will separate according to areas. Just like Philly, you'll see Southwest dudes with Southwest dudes. West dudes or West dudes. South dudes, South dudes. North Philly dudes, North Philly dudes. So on and so on, right? That's how prison is. We're not divided by race. There are some guys that choose to divide themselves by race, but it's not mandatory. So if you get locked up here in Virginia, if you're from Petersburg, you fall in the Richmond category. So upon meeting Berg, as soon as he says his name, I said, what's your name? He said, Berg. I said, Berg or Berg? He was like, Berg, B-U-R-G. So you from Petersburg? He was like, yeah. I said, that's what's up. I'm from Richmond. So me and dude... We click up, you know, from around the same area somewhat. Not to be exact, but Richmond and Petersburg, side by side, right? I click to one thing real quick I pick up on is this dude is, A, trying way too hard on this being locked up stuff. B, he knows it all. There's nothing. He's way younger than me. Like dude's in his early 20s. I think he was like 21, 22. He knows everything. You can't tell this dude nothing. Everything you did, he's done it. You tell a story and he's going to out tell your story with something he did. So I started to look at dude like, is dude pathological? Is he a narcissist? Like, what's up with this dude, right? When I say he tried too hard on being locked up, he would do things that were unnecessary. Now, mind you, he had just got to this prison where I'm at. He hadn't been locked up long he got locked up at his trial, so he didn't stay in jail all through his trial. And from the date he was convicted, found guilty, and sentenced, it wouldn't be maybe six months later he's in a cell with me. So he hasn't even been incarcerated a full six months now. And he's at a place where you got guys in here for every charge under the moon, except for petty stuff. You got a large majority of lifers. There are gang members. 
everywhere. The numbers are growing every day. This is a violent compound. This is a place where people die. This is a place where men are sent to be electrocuted to death. This is Greensville Correctional Center. He gets there, gets in the cell with me, and I noticed something immediately. This dude is doing things that it seems almost like he saw on TV or he heard somebody talk about. One of the first things he does is he rips his sheet up and rips his long, like you take a sheet and strip, rip off a strip like this wide all the way down the full length of the sheet. Then take your little razor, cut another strip about this wide, all the way down the full length of your sheet, tie those two strips in a knot, and you can hang it across the cell and hang clothes up on it, right? Second, third day, this dude is making a clothesline. And I'm telling him, I'm like, yo, you ain't got to um, ain't gotta make a clothesline, man. I'm like, you can pay the laundry, man. I can put you in line. I can holler at the dude that does the laundry. Buy your own detergent. The little boxes are tied off the commissary. Give the dude, you know, whatever he charges each week to do laundry. And he'll take your clothes upstairs and wash them separate from everybody else's clothes. Otherwise, your clothes go in a net bag with your cell number on it, the building. And it gets sent to main laundry where your bag gets thrown in a big washing machine full of other net bags full of clothes. And there might be 40 different bags floating around in this big industrial washing machine getting washed with like this lye type. If you know what lye is. This lie like chemical that's just terrible. It it's, comes back, your clothes itch you. I said, man, you ain't got to wash your clothes. I'll hook you up with the laundry, man. Now, why am I going to pay somebody to do something I can do, man? That don't make no sense. I said, all right, man, whatever, right? He proceeds to take and wash the toilet bowl. When I mean he washed it, he scrubbed that toilet bowl to the point that you could almost see your reflection out of it. You could be standing there peeing in the toilet and see the bottom of your balls. You know what I mean? Just from the from the reflection in the toilet. I cleaned my toilet, but this dude spent a lot of time cleaning this toilet. So I'm thinking, well, that's what's up. He's a clean dude. You know what I mean? He's going to keep it clean in here. I clean too, but damn, he's been over there like a long time cleaning this toilet. I've seen dudes do this in the past, and I'd seen it afterwards, right? He proceeds to... Take his bar of soap, put it in a sock, smash it up. It's a bar of Irish Spring. Beats it on the floor, beats it and beats it and beats it inside the sock until it crumbles up, right? Takes and uses his state ID and chops it up like you would a drug or something until it's like a powder. Takes his white t-shirts, puts them in the toilet, dumps his stuff in there, and cleans his clothes in the toilet. As he's doing this, I'm looking. I say, yo, ah, man, you don't, that's, what are you doing? He was like, I'm doing my laundry. What's it look like? I said, man, it looks like you're doing something you've seen on a TV show. Like something you've seen on an old prison movie. Like, we don't do our laundry in the toilet, man. He's like, the toilet's clean. I cleaned it. I said, bro, the toilet is not clean, man. I said, you know how the toilet has that little bend where your poop goes in and then disappears? You can't get your hand up in there to clean it. I work maintenance. I've seen what the inside of those toilets look like. That toilet is not clean. That toilet has been in place now for 25 years at least. You know how many people have used the bathroom in that toilet? Do you know what the inside of that toilet where you can't see right past where you're able to scrub looks like? Nah, man, the toilet's clean. I'm telling you, look, you could drink this water. I said, no, the hell I won't. He doesn't listen to me. Proceeds to wash his clothes. Then he would take his clothes and lay them in the sink. And I told him, don't do that. Don't, don't take your dirty toilet bowl clean clothes and put them in the sink. That's why I wash my face. That's why I brush my teeth. We don't do that. We keep the sink clean. If you want to wash your clothes in the toilet, by all means, do what you're going to do. But don't take your your, your, your shit water t-shirts and stick them in the sink where I have to wash my face and I drink my water from. All right. That's the word. That's the word. I respect that. I respect that. So we got a little trash can in the cell. A little tan trash can. Maybe 12 inches tall. About 8 inches wide. Just a little trash can. He would take his clothes. Pull them out the toilet, soaking wet, put them in the trash can, and then f flush the toilet to get all the soapy water out. Put the shirt in the toilet, and then f keep flushing it so that, and these toilets have high pressure. It's like, like serious pressure. He'd flush it, and the water running inside the toilet would like pretty much rinse off the clothes. He had just finished cleaning in the toilet, right? I warned this dude about that toilet. Told you this dude don't listen. Anything you can do, I can do better. One of those type of dudes. 
He proceeds to do other things with the toilet. I come in one day and I go to use the bathroom. I go in to pee in the toilet and the toilet's full of ice. There's ice floating and I look and he's got sodas in the toilet. So I come out, I'm like, Berg, come in, man. He comes over to the cell. What's up? I said, bro, what are you doing? I, the soda's cold. You want one? Nah, I do not want one. I don't ever want anything. There is nothing that goes in that toilet that I'm going to keep or that I want. Where am I supposed to piss at? You got all these sodas in the toilet. Oh, man, I ain't even think about that. Damn, bad. My dog, let me, let me grab them out, man. So he grabs them out, puts them in the little trash can, gets him some ice. I said, yeah, if you're going to try to keep the sodas cool or you got some milk you want to keep cold, put it in the trash can. You can scrub the trash can out because we can see that's clean. Scrub the hell out of the little trash can and put your ice in there. All right. I go ahead and use the bathroom, right? I'm trying to give the young in the game, but he's not hearing me. We're sitting in the cell. He's got his T-shirts hung across the penitentiary clothesline that's going across the cell. That he just washed in the shit bowl. That he just washed in the John. That he just washed in the Jack. That he just, you know what I mean? And he's over there one day and he's washing his shirts. And he's doing the same routine. He's wrung his shirts out. Puts them in the little trash can. Takes the shirts one at a time. Flushes the toilet. Keeps flushing. And the water pressure in the water. Cleaning the, you know, soap off the shirts. Then eventually he'll wring it out. Fluff it, fluff it a couple times and hang it on the clothesline in the cell, right? Tell me why he's sitting there and he's flushing the toilet and he's holding the shirt and kind of holding it in a ball and he's flushing it, the water's running across it and it sucks the shirt up inside the toilet and he's still holding it and it's trying to pull the shirt up inside the toilet. I look over at him because he's like, oh shit. He pulls the shirt out and he's holding on to about this much of the shirt it's 2XYT and you got all the rest of it up inside the pipe of the toilet. I feel sick just talking about it. He pulls his shirt out and when he pulls his shirt out, everything that his hand wasn't holding was brown. Everything that his hand wasn't holding was coated with a thick layer of toilet, toilet, toilet waste. He is, this shirt is covered in shit. 25, 30 years of people using that toilet. His shirt just got sucked up into that septic pipe. And I'm not lying to you. When he pulled it out, the only part of it that was white it was what he had in his hand. He pulled his shirt out and said, ah, dropped it on the floor fast, looking all surprised. I'm sitting on the bunk. I looked over. I gagged a couple times. I said, I told you, dumbass about using that toilet. Man, I ain't know it was dirty like that up inside. I said, yeah. And you was drinking sodas out of it. That's just all on your gums, all over your lips. How you feel now, know it all? Man, my shirt is... He's more stressed out over the fact that he just lost his shirt and it's messed up. Not the fact that he's been drinking sodas out the toilet bowl. Not the fact that he's been wearing clothes on his back for months and months and months and months that... He's been washing in his toilet bowl. Idiot. Idiot. Berg would go on to join one of the gangs. Get in, caught up in a whole bunch of gang stuff that was going on. And bye bye Berg and him washing clothes in the toilet. He never washed his clothes again in that toilet after that day. But if you ever find yourself dumb enough or in a situation where you get locked up, Use the toilet for what it's intended for. Do not wash your clothes in it. Do not put things in it that you're going to put to your mouth. Sit your ass on it. Stand above it and pee. If you're a female, squat. Do whatever you got to do. But remember it. It's not a refrigerator. It's not a washing machine. It is a toilet. Check out saying. I shouldn't have to say this. I shouldn't have to explain this. You'd think most people would already know. But prison is full of thieves. There are some of the thievingest, sticky finger, conniving, shysty, steal something from you real quick type dudes in prison. There are a lot of creative ways that guys steal things. Before any gets, anybody gets in the, oh, you giving the game up? You telling? No. What I'm about to say, everything I'm about to say 
is common knowledge. Where I was at, it was a daily thing that people were getting caught doing this. So I miss me with the whole, you giving the game up, you just told something, now they know. Prisons have been around for a long time. I don't think at, their, at this point right now, there's anything anybody could do in prison that would shock a guard, surprise a guard, or would be a first time for a guard. We got a dude named Fats. Fats isn't so much the steal from you type. Fats is what we call the mule. Fats is a smuggler. Fats likes to eat. Got his name Fats because he's fat. So everybody just calls him Fats. One of the beauties of working in the chow hall, if that's what you decide to do, I think personally, it was one of the most miserable, terrible jobs you could ever have in prison unless you like to eat chow hall food all day. But one of the beauties in working in the chow hall is the chow hall hustle. The chow hall hustle consists of you, when nobody's looking, taking other items out the chow hall. You take leftover pancakes, oranges, which are made for, you know, consumption. But a lot of oranges combined with sugar. Some bread makes wine. All these different things. Peanut butter day. You get a whole, you take a bread bag and fill that bread bag halfway up full of peanut butter. You smuggle it back. Hey. You're selling, you know, shots of peanut butter. Somebody bring you their jar. You fill their peanut butter jar up. Give me $2. But there was a lot of different things that anything you could really think of that was actually edible or good, guys would find a way to smuggle back from the chow hall, back to the building. And some guys they had contracts with that, hey, every time you get that, here, I'm going to pay you in advance. I want a contract. Three times a week, bring me that if we got it. Fats is a mule. These guys will work back there. And the guard back there, 90% of the times in the chow hall, didn't stand there watching like in the movies. He wasn't standing off to the side, paying attention to what everybody was doing. He would 90% of the time be in the office with the female that came in from the streets. That was like the chow hall manager. That was her job. They were always females. So the guard would usually be sitting in her office. While the inmates served food, made food, passed food out, washed trays, mopped, cleaned up. While this guard's in his office, boom, that's your time. Start bagging stuff up. You get bread with pretty much every meal. So after every meal, there are hundreds of empty loaves of bread, just the bag. And that's the best thing you can use to put something in. Guys would fill these bags full of whatever, and if they didn't have a mule... They would tie it to the inside of their pants and smuggle this back swinging between their legs. Whatever you just bought from him that's inside that bag came back smuggled on his nuts. He wears some whites, kitchen whites, extra big, extra large, so you can't see that, you know, he's got this package between his legs and he was smuggling them back. Fats, on the other hand, it's wintertime. Fats comes to the chow hall. Wearing his jacket. Big, big boy. Now, the beauty with the jacket is you can put stuff inside the jacket, put your hands down in your pockets, and kind of put them underneath whatever you've got inside your jacket and cradle it. Or you can cut a slit in the lining in your jacket and fill the whole side of your jacket up. We're sitting there, and I dealt with fats in the past because I wasn't big on, I'm not trying to eat anything, dude just smuggle back on his, on his ball sack. I don't care if it was in a bag. I don't care about none of that. I got the mental image of it came back. That package was right next to your package. I'm good. You know what I mean? I don't care how many times you wrapped it. It's just something I wasn't, you know, the mental image sticks with me. So when Fats will bring things back, hey, I'm cool with that. Because he brought it back in his jacket. Fats will bring back pancakes. Fats will bring back peanut butter. Fats will bring back loaves of bread. I'm sitting in the chow hall one day, and I see the sign. I, I see the dude back in the back. I see Fats. He's facing where the dudes are passing out the food out the window, and he keeps looking over at where the dirty trays are supposed to go in, and he keeps looking, and he's looking at the dude that's working back then. The dude nods his head, letting him know, hey, when you roll out, you know, what I got for you to smuggle back is ready. Just let the dude at the window know. He knows you're coming over there to get it. He's going to reach underneath where the dirty trays go, pull it up, hand it out the little hole, 
real quick. You bam it, head back to the building with it. It's cold outside. Those guards ain't into that shaking people down in the wintertime. Everybody's bundled up. It's icy. It's freezing. They're cold. They're mad. They got to stand out there in the cold. So they're not trying to pat people down. They just let people walk on by them, right? Do nods at Fats. Like, it's ready. Fats gets up, goes over to the window. And when I'm telling you, this dude was greedy, the guy that bagged it up. Greedy is an understatement. He gave Fats a bag, and this was a trash bag, full of pancakes. Maybe, probably every bit of 100 pancakes in this clear trash bag. This is not a yard bag. This is not a bag made for leaves. This is definitely not a bag that's designed to hold 100 pancakes. He gives it to Fats. Fats goes and sits back down at the table because the bag is way bigger than what he expected. So he's got it, he's done took it and put it up underneath his jacket, and now he's trying to figure out, like, man, how the hell am I gonna get back from here all the way to the building past these two guards standing outside with all these pancakes, man? Like he's looking at dude, like, man, you've lost your mind. There is also a big ass bag like this, a bread bag full of maple syrup. Sat right down inside of there and tied up with all these pancakes. I'm looking, and at this point, it becomes almost like a show, like comical to me. I'm watching like, geez, how is this dude going to get back with all these pancakes and that syrup? He's now got it. He can't. There's nothing he can do with it. The guy at the window ain't letting you push it back through. He's not about to take it because you could pass it off to him at the moment that guard decides to walk out the office, get him locked up, sent to the hole, get your ass sent and locked up to the hole. Once it touches your hands, it's yours. I bagged it up. You better get it back to the building. Fats talks to a couple of dudes at the table he's sitting at, and you can see he's nervous because he's done pushed his tray out, which means he's finished his meal. Why are you still sitting at the table, inmate, and you don't have a tray? He gets it situated and finally gets to where he can get his hands up underneath this huge bag, and it just looks ridiculous with the bulge in front of his jacket. And he tells a couple of dudes he's sitting with at the table, hey, we go out to chow hall. One of y'all get on the left of me. One of y'all get on the right of me. One of y'all get on the front of me. And block me so these officers can't see this big ass bulge, right? That's what they do. These three dudes get up, they go put their tray in. He's agreed to break them off some pancakes. They make the great escape. Out the chow hall door they go. I gotta see this, right? This is amazing. Man, just stole 100 pancakes. I hate pancakes, by the way. Never eat another pancake in my life. They're going out the door. Clear right past the guards. Guards are standing there talking to each other. Dudes are blocking him. And you got to walk up this long, like, section of sidewalk. And then turn what, down what we call the main boulevard, which is the main section of sidewalk that runs in between these buildings. And it's a good little walk from the chow hall back to your building. Then you turn up another sidewalk, and it takes you to your building, right? Fats is maybe 50, 60 feet out of the chow hall. Making his way to the building. Pancaked up. He has got the pancake pack. You know what I mean? Boy's gonna be eating good. They're selling pancakes, three for a dollar. Good to go, right? As I'm watching Fats and I'm with my homeboy, we're maybe 50, 60 feet behind him. I see the first pancake fall. Boom! Hit the ground. I saw, oh shit, the bag ripped, the bag ripped. Boom, boom. We see another pancake fall. Now there's pancakes laying on the sidewalk. These two guards are still talking, and these dudes are trying to block them. You can see Fats panicking, trying to, like, readjust his bag and figure out where it's ripped at so these pancakes don't keep falling out. I see the guard. I look over at the guard, and the guard is, like, looking at them just because you can see that Fats is uncomfortable and he's got people blocking him. And now they're looking, and they see these couple pancakes laying on the ground. And all of a sudden, I look over at Fats, and the whole bag just lets loose. Fats is walking it. All these pancakes <coughs> fall out this bag. This bread bag full of maple syrup falls and busts right on his boots. Maple syrup goes everywhere. They are walking, stepping on pancakes. They got pancakes stuck to the bottom of their boots. The officer, hey, 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 all oh, y'all, come here, come here, come here. They will go over there. Fats has still got his hands in his pocket. And he's still got about maybe 20 pancakes left out of 100 now that's in this bag. They tell Fats, unzip your jacket. 
For what? Unzip. He's got syrup all over his boots. There's a trail of pancakes left behind him like somebody just left a bunch of M&Ms out for E.T. The pancakes lead right to where you're standing. Fats tries to take one hand out because if he takes his hands out of his pocket to unzip his jacket, the moment he takes his hands out of his pocket, everything's going to fall. Fats takes one hand out of his pocket, goes to unzip his jacket, and I guess he was going to try to cuff his jacket and pull the package to the side like, see, I ain't got nothing. Man, when he takes his hand out of his pocket, the other 20 pancakes fall out. Boom! Hit the ground. They call the people out there. You can see the guard. The guard is like, this is comical to him too, but he just stole out the chow hall. Your ass is going to the hole, right? You can see him cracking up. He's on the radio like, Sarge, I need you to come downstairs, man. Come out in front of 7 building to the boulevard. What's going on? Now, you'll see when you get here. Sergeant comes out the building. As soon as he steps out the building, other inmates have stepped in these pancakes. Other inmates have stepped in the syrup. There's now a trail, like footsteps of syrup leading back into the building. And a sergeant stands there looking like, he said, oh, no. Lock his ass up, man. Lock him up. And just like that, 100 pancakes gone. And Fat's dumb ass went right to the hole. Can't make this shit up, man. There are some stupid, stupid, stupid people locked up. Some things that no matter what they do, no matter how hard they try, what security measures they put into place, they will never take out of the penitentiary. They will never be able to rid the penitentiary of the things I'm about to tell you about. Gambling. Homosexuality. Drinking, drugs, tattooing. Those are five things that no matter what they do, how hard they try, they'll never, ever, ever be able to eliminate in the penitentiary. I spent quite a while, a good majority of my bed, drinking. People are like, what? You was locked up drinking? We make wine. We make a lot of wine. I was known for making wine. Once I got the recipe down, I had several different recipes down to a T. And it would come out the same every single time I became the man. It allowed me to drink as much as I wanted. And it allowed me to make good money. I wasn't the only one that made wine. A lot of guys made wine. Now, one thing people, they'll tell you, I was drinking the wine while I was locked up. What people don't tell you is... That shit is disgusting. I don't care what you say, what you drink, what your argument is. It is disgusting every single time. Even the best cup of prison wine is disgusting. It gets to a point where everybody's got their own recipe. Everybody's making their own wine. At any given moment, there might be 20, 25 gallons of wine within our pod brewing. Five gallons in this cell, five gallons in that cell, five gallons in that cell. Dudes are on to the wine game. Five gallons. Make good money off these five gallons of wine. And if you decide you don't want to make no money and you want to just space it out and drink it over the course of a couple of days, do you. Melly Mel. Let me tell y'all about Melly Mel. Melly Mel comes in from another building. Melly Mel requests to get sent over to our building. He gets a job. Working in the kitchen, and at the time, they had the kitchen workers all living in my pod. I was a maintenance worker, and they had turned my pod into a pod where if you were in that pod, you had to have some type of penitentiary job, right? <coughs> Worked out great for us because the kitchen workers were bringing back all the oranges you could imagine. They were bringing back raw yeast. Sometimes they would bring back raw sugar. We had the best wine on the compound. And this pod in this building, this one particular section of this building, couldn't nobody else in the compound mess with the wine we had because we had the right ingredients to make it with. <sighs> Melly Mel gets a kitchen job, comes on over to our pod. I, I remember when they brought all these different new dudes in to our pod and they were transferring dudes out of our pod to other buildings because they refused to work or didn't have jobs. My batch comes up, my batch being the five gallons of wine I just made. 
Melly Mel comes up, introduces himself. I already knew who he was. You know, I'd heard his name before. Knew a couple people that messed with him here and there. And when he came in the pod, I'd heard a couple different people be like, yeah, that's what's up. Melly Mel's in here, right? Melly Mel comes over to my son. He's like, hey, what's up, man? I'm Mel. They call me Melly Mel. I said, all right, you know, what's, what's up? What's good with you? He was like, nothing, man. He's like, look, I ain't trying to be nosy. And I know you ain't supposed to know everything. But, you know, word spreads, man. They said, you got the wine. I said, yeah, I got wine. What's up? He's like, what you, what you want for them Jones? I said, depends. If you're buying it, you know, one cup at a time, $8. But if you're going to buy two or more, I'll give them to you $6 a piece. It's on you. You can get three cups for 18 or, you know, you can buy them, come buy them each one, you know, $8 each time you come. He was like, yeah, 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 that's that's what's up, man. That's good. I'll take the, let me get the three for 18. I said, all right. I give Melly Mel these three cups of wine. I said, well, let me finish straining it. You got to strain the fruit off. Get all the stuff floating out the bag, strain it. We would use that you gotta wear these hair nets in the kitchen when you're working and you're serving food and stuff. And with having the kitchen workers in our pot, like I told you, we had endless access to this stuff. These are brand new hair nets. You put it over top of whatever you're straining it, you pour the wine, the fruit, and all that, and the hair net would catch the fruit, all the leftover stuff, and when you're done, you're just left with the liquid. Squeeze the hair net out, get all the excess liquid out, bag this stuff up, right? And we would take gloves. Like a latex glove, you put your hand in, brand new gloves, fill the glove up, take you, fill the cup up to the line with this tumbler cup, about this big. Fill the cup up, pour that into the glove, then tie the glove in a knot. So I would have this big sack of these five-finger gloves filled up with wine, tied in a knot. That's enough to fill your cup up. That's how we measure them, right? Comes and gets his three cups, right? Brings me the commissary. I'm like, good looking, man. If you want some more, just let me know. I still got a couple cups left, but you better come quick because... They go fast, right? Meanwhile, you got other dudes that still have a little bit of wine left. Dudes that are waiting on their wine to come up. So they might come and, Jay, let me hold a couple uh, couple cups of wine until, you know, my stuff comes up. I'm like, man, my stuff's better than yours, man. You got to give me three cups of yours and two of mine. That's how it works, right? Melly Mel would take these three cups of wine and go sit out in the, in the day room with everybody else at the tables. His homeboys and them would just be drinking this wine after he finished his cup. He go to his cell, pop another glove open, fill the cup up, sit out there with his homeboys at the table on the benches and stuff, just chopping it up, laughing, dudes be rapping, beating on the trash can lids. They're just making the best of a bad situation. Drinking, trying to, you know, unload, relax a little bit, have some fun while you're locked up. There is times that happens, right? Melly Mel drinks these three cups of wine, and I told him when I gave them to him, I see all this, that shit's strong, bro. Be careful with that shit right there. It's a missile. Missile meaning... It puts you on your ass. It's serious. It's good, right? Melly Mel comes stumbling over to my door. And Melly Mel is fucked up. Stumbling there, standing there, looking at me all crazy in the face. And he's like, hey, you still got some more wine. I'm not selling Melly Mel no more wine. He's too drunk as it is. And if he ends up getting tore off being drunk, the guards get onto the fact that he's drunk. They're going to come in and start shaking down. Gonna, my cell stinks like wine right now. I just finished bagging up. I've been selling it. I've been drinking as well. I ain't got but a couple, you know, a couple gloves left. I said, no, nah, I'm going to keep what I got left, man. I got I to gotta have this. Come on, man. I'll give you the $8 a cup on all them Jones, man. I said, nah, man, I'm going to keep the last few. I'll give you $10 a cup. He's super drunk. I said, nah, man, I'm not coming up off of him. What I got left is just personal. I could have sold him a couple, but like I said, I didn't want to get everybody else in trouble <coughs> because Melly Mel couldn't. Hold his wine or hold his liquor. He was a lightweight, skinny dude, but cool dude. All right, man, that's what it is. That's what it is, right? A couple days later, another dude's batch comes up. I go over there tell him, hey, let me get them three cups off of you for what? the two cups I gave you. He gives me mine. It's a good batch, good wine. Tastes like shit. Definitely tastes like old rotted fruit fluid, but it will mess you up sideways. I don't think there's much wine... It's like drinking a bottle of night train or, you know what I mean? It's hot in this truck. Too, I'm about to start sweating. So, a couple days later, this dude's batch comes up. I get my cups. Yeah, it's okay. This is, this is good prison wine, right? I like it. Did a good job. Melly Mel goes over there, buys him a bunch of cups. Same thing gets ha happens, right? Melly Mel gets all messed up. He's in the pod hooting, hollering, making a scene. Dude does the same thing. We're convicts. We've been doing this long enough to know the last thing you ever want to do is put the guards onto game. You don't want them to realize that you're intoxicated. You don't want to get caught. 
That's why we're all here, because we got caught, stupid. Dude won't sell Melly Mel no wine. Nah, man, hell nah, man, you tipsy as hell, look at you. You staggering, you stink. Like, bro, you making the most noise? No, hell no, I'm not giving you no more wine. Melly Mel gets in his feelings, but he don't do nothing about it. It's nothing to beef over. It's that man's stuff. How you can get mad? Melly Mel finds a solution to the problem. You think Melly Mel does? Melly Mel says, shit, I work in the kitchen. I get oranges. I get sugar. I get all this stuff. I get straining nuts. Make my own damn wine. To hell with buying it. I'm going to make it. Melly Mel's talked to a couple different people. He knows the recipe. He knows how to make it. He makes his batch of wine. When I heard Melly Mel was making a batch of wine, I said, this is going to end bad. It always ends bad. Melly Mel telling everybody, yeah, my shit is a missile, man. That shit is so funky. When I burp the bag, the fumes be gagging me. It's so strong. Man, it's just about done. Then it gets to the point where, yo, my wine's coming up tonight. It's ready. It's ready to be drank. It's been about five days now, right? Process is done. <coughs> I see dudes going to Melly Mel's cell. My celly comes back and tells me, like, oh, Melly Mel made a missile, man. His first batch is serious. Like, he might be somebody to compete with in here. That dude shit is strong. Like, I don't know what he used, but he used a lot of it, and it's, it's really good. I said, shit, that's what's up. Let me go holler at him. So I go over to him, I said, what's up, Melly Melly? So I said, you got the wine? He was like, yeah, $8 a cup if you buy one, or you can get, you know, more than this amount for six, just like I did him. I said, that's what's up. I respect the hustle, man. My shit ain't ready yet. Let me get three cups of your wine. He's like, all right. I drank these three cups of wine, and I'm, I'm fucked up, like to say the least. I'm fucked up. I go over to my homeboy's cell. He gets, he's got a little bit of weed. We twist the weed up, drink in his cell. Smoking his cell. I'm in there and I'm fucked up. Melly Mel is selling wine, but Melly Mel is drinking wine as fast as he can sell it. He's out in the pod and this dude is stumbling around. He's spilling it out of his cup. He's got it on the front of his white t shirt. He hasn't washed his arms off or none of that since he strained this stuff and bagged it up. He reeks of wine. You can look at this dude in society. And immediately be like, if you were a cop, arrest him. He's drunk in public. Melly Mel is staggering. He's coming up to all of us. And we're like, yo, man, go over there, man. Like, you're making shit hot. You're way too drunk. You're bent. Like, you need to do something, right? Dude gives him the stupidest advice could have ever gave him. He tells him, Mel, man, maybe you need to go shower or something. And you know, there's that, like, myth that if you take a shower and you're really high, it'll help you with being high. Had to turn the AC on real quick, man. It's hot in here. Or, there's that myth that if you're really drunk and you take a shower, it'll help you with being drunk, it'll help you sober up. That is a myth. Once something is introduced into your body, the only thing that is going to help it go away is time. Sometimes you can eat and that'll help absorb, absorb the liquor or whatever you got going on. But for the most part, if you're drunk, you're drunk until drunk decides to leave. Melly Mel, yeah, man, you right, man. I'm going to go hit these showers real quick, man. I'll be back. My bad, man. Young dude, dumb dude, just an all-out hot boy making shit hot, right? He goes on up. I see him stagger up the staircase, splashing wine out of his cup. He had a full cup when he came down. Now it's about a half a cup because this shit is splashed all over the floor. You got dudes in there cleaning up behind him because we're not trying to have the guards come through and see it. Not to mention it reeks of wine in here because so many people are drinking. I see Melly Mel go in the shower, go in the cell, come out of his cell, head down the tier, got his shower stuff, got his shower shoes on, he's in a pair of boxes, got the same dirty ass shirt on with the wine stains all over the front of it, got fresh boxes, a soap, a soap container that your soap goes in, fresh shirt, all the stuff he needs to take a shower with, right? Melly Mel goes on in the shower, don't think nothing else about it, right? I'm sitting there, you know, posted up my homeboy's cell. You're not supposed to be in the cell. So I'm more or less sitting so I can see the door. And I can also see the top tier. I need to make sure if an officer comes in, I can step out of his cell and not get in trouble for being in his cell. And not be, you know, found to be messed up, right? <clears throat> so I'm kind of observing what's going on out in, the, out in the day room. I'm all bent, just sitting there. Enjoying the fact that we just drank. Enjoying the fact that we just smoked. And it's been like... 
20 minutes now, and I'm like, damn, Melly Mel's still in the show. I'm thinking he must be gunning. He's in there doing something he shouldn't be doing, right? I'm like, man, he's been in the show a long time. You know I mean? I'm just not really thinking much of it. And then I look up to top tier, and I see the door open. There's a door on the bottom, and there's a door on the top. And these doors slide. As soon as you come to that door, the showers are right there. I see the top tier door open. I tell my, my homeboy, I see you, I'm going to slide out your cell, man. The guard's coming through. So I step out of his cell real quick so they won't catch me in his cell. And I see the guard come on through the door. And he glances over the showers and he walks a little bit forward and he stops. And he backs up. Looks in the shower. He don't see nobody. He looks over the shower door. And he sees Melly Mel. Melly Mel done got in the shower. Drunk. Drunk out of his mind like Ned the Wino. Done sat down in this disgusting, dirty ass shower. A penitentiary shower is definitely top five places you never want your butt cheeks or any of your physical parts to ever touch that floor. Definitely top five. Next to like volcano, bullet, things like that. You don't ever want any of your body parts to touch that shower floor. That is why we wear shower shoes. Melly Mel <coughs> done got in the shower drunk trying to rinse the, the drunk off of him. I guess he was enjoying the way the water felt and sat down on the floor and has passed out and is laying in this little shower, unconscious, drunk. Water's just running, and he's just laying there. The guard asks him, what are you doing? He's passed out all the way, passed completely out. Hey, what are you doing? He don't get up. Guard turns around, looks at all of us, locked down. He don't know what's wrong with this man. He don't know if somebody has attacked him and left him in there dead. He don't know if the man's had a heart attack, a stroke, a brain aneurysm, OD'd on something. All he knows is he's got an unresponsive black male laying in the shower. Last place, probably first time he's ever seen anybody laying in the shower unless they were actually killed or something or died. Locked down. I'm like, fuck, man, what's done happened? We locked down. I look up, and now other guards are coming in. We're in our cells, and I'm standing there watching. I see a guard reach in. Another guard's are showing up, turn the water off inside the shower, right? They get Melly Mel to his feet, and they bring Melly Mel out the shower, butt ball naked, right? All of us are standing there, and I gay about this shit. You see naked people all the time in prison. That's just part of prison. They bring Melly Mel out, and he is just, can't even stand up. This dude is so drunk. I don't know if he took another glove of wine with him to the shower, or if it really just hit him that hard once he got upstairs, right? But yeah, old Melly Mel, he liked to drink, so he thought. And drank so much that he would go into the shower and go on to pass out on the shower floor and be discovered by the guards. They go to Melly Mel's cell. Luckily, Melly Mel had made his own wine or else all of us would have got shook down until they found what they were looking for. They go to Melly Mel's cell, find the rest of the wine, Find the bag he made it in. Sell reeks of wine. There's wine everywhere. There's a cup sitting there with wine in it. Lock Melly Mel's dumbass right on up and send him to the hole. Yo, I hope you understand how stupid some people can be. I was not lying when I told you I've seen some idiots. I've seen some dumb, the dumb, dumb, dumb things take place in prison. You don't question why some of these guys are locked up. You question, how did you make it out there so long without getting locked up? Damn, you are dumb. Somebody that's so dumb, if you ask them how to spell 13, they'd say 1-3. Just dumbass people in this world. Unbelievable, man. But I hope y'all enjoyed today's story, man. I'm going to do some more of these as well because it's just so many of them. It's just easy. Anyway, these institutions, these jails, facilities, prisons, detention centers, all these places, they're just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do. Salute.